On Monday the 18th of August 1997, just after 8pm, police received two phone calls from members of the public stating that a boy had been shot in the head. By the time police had arrived, the road that had had a crowd was totally deserted. Everybody had fled. And lying in a pool of his own blood was a young man who'd been fatally shot. This is the story of the murder of 18-year-old Joelle Newby. Joelle Newby, born on the 8th of September 1978 to Jennifer Youngsum and Leeton Newby. He was described as a well-known person in the area he lived in, which was Winston Green, postcode B18, and he was always seen riding his mountain bike. He was affectionately known by his family and friends as Joe or Gyro. He attended Lordswood Boys School in Harborne and was said to be very talented at music. On Monday the 18th of August 1997, Joel had been wearing a white striped t-shirt and black canvas trousers and whilst hanging out with friends near to where he lived on Carlisle Street in Winston Green, Joel told his friends that he had to go and deal with something quickly and he'd be right back. But Joel would never come back. A female cousin of Joel's was in a relationship or a friendship with a 17-year-old boy by the name of Leon Henry, but it had turned sour. And that day they'd had a confrontation. The unnamed female cousin had called Joel, and the group of them had gone to confront Leon Henry. It's been alleged that Joel had struck Leon Henry and taken his mobile phone off him. Leon had gone and called his two older brothers, Richard Henry, aged 31, and Dean Henry, aged 19, and an arrangement was made for them to meet up to hand back the phone. The arrangement was to meet up with Joel and his people on Crompton Road, Handsworth, at the junction of Heathfield Road, and just before 8pm, a Vauxhall Cavalier pulled up, driven by 31-year-old Richard Henry, also known by the street name Rico. Richard proceeded to jump out the car and yell to the passengers, Come out! Come out! Who was it? 17-year-old Leon got out the car and pointed at Joel Newby. The driver had a gun and people at the scene tried to calm him down as an argument broke out. The gun was pointed at 18-year-old Joel's head. Joel began backing off, telling Richard to just call it. But blinded by his rage, Richard pointed the gun at Joel and shot him at point-blank range, execution style, in the forehead and Joel fell to the ground. The three brothers got back into the car and drove off and Joel was left lying in the street with the mobile phone still in his possession. Two 999 calls came into the police just after 8pm that night, saying that a young man had been shot, but the callers did not identify themselves. There were 20 to 30 people on the street at the scene of the murder, but by the time the police arrived, they had all fled and the street was deserted. The road was sealed off as a crime scene, and a dozen officers carried out a fingertip search of the scene as a crowd of around 200 people began to gather. Police began an appeal for eyewitnesses to come forward, which resulted in three eyewitnesses coming forward. The killer was described as being between 30 to 35, 5 foot 8 with a beard and moustache, and wearing a distinctive creamy beige jacket. Joel's family was said to be distraught. Based on evidence given by the eyewitnesses, three days after the murder, the two brothers, Leon and Dean Henry, were arrested on the 21st of August. But the older brother, Richard Henry, had fled to Jamaica via Holland the day after the murder.
The trial of the two Henry brothers, Leon and Dean, started on the 23rd of June, 1998. They were both charged with murder as a joint enterprise, but they both denied the allegations. During the trial, Joao's cousin, 17-year-old Micah Youngsum, who had been there when Joao was shot, gave evidence. He told the court that Joao had not stolen the phone, but that during the altercation that had ensued with Leon, Leon had dropped his phone and Joao had picked it up and then had arranged for the phone to be handed back on Crompton Road, Handsworth, where Joao had been killed. Michael told the jury that gunman Richard had pulled up in a Vauxhall Cavalier and asked who it was. When Leon pointed out Joao, Richard had punched him in the face, then pulled out a gun and tried to cock it. Micah said, I thought he was going to shoot me, so I ran. Micah also said that he heard Joao trying to calm the gunman down as he backed away towards his own car and he dropped the mobile phone as the shooter, Richard Henry, shot him. Micah said, I saw the driver shoot him and Joao just dropped. In their defence, the two Henry brothers told the jury that the family and friends of Joao had surrounded and attacked them before the gun was pulled out and fired. The trial lasted for eight days and on the 30th of June 1998, Judge Justice Ebsworth acquitted the two brothers due to lack of evidence. After the verdict, angry scenes involving around 20 people erupted outside the courtroom and the court security had to be called. The police had not given up their search for the man who actually pulled the trigger, Richard Henry, and an international arrest warrant was obtained. Police officer Mike Treble and another colleague travelled to Jamaica to Tivoli Gardens. Because of the dangers of two white police officers from England being in Tivoli Gardens, they were accompanied by local Jamaican police officers as well as the army and two properties were raided. But Richard Henry could not be located. Ten years after the murder, police said that they felt they had let the family down of Joao as it's believed that Richard Henry had travelled back to England on a fake passport for one more visit, after which he fled the country again. Joao's mother, Jennifer Youngsum, told the media, Joao's death is like a cancer eating away at us. Nearly 26 years after the murder, till this day, the man who pulled the trigger shooting Joao at point-blank range in the forehead has never been caught. West Midlands Police said, Until we get him, or he is certified dead, it is unfinished business for us. Richard Clifton Henry has an international arrest warrant and his fingertips lay on file. <laughs>